Bismillah Madrim. The topic of our discussion today is bacterial sepsis following pregnancy. RCG guideline 64B. We have already discussed bacterial sepsis in pregnancy. RCG guideline 64A, and you can find its link in the i button in the top right corner of this video. The first point in this guideline is that who is at increased risk of sepsis in puerperium. We have different risk factors which include first of all obesity, impaired glucose tolerance or diabetes, impaired immunity or immunosuppressant medications, anemia, vaginal discharge, history of pelvic infection, history of group B streptococcal infection, amniocentesis and other invasive procedures, cervical circlage prolonged spontaneous rupture of membrane, group A streptococcal infection in close contacts or family member of black and other minority ethnic or group origin. Now, what are the common organisms causing sepsis in the perpurum including hospital acquired infection? The major pathogens causing sepsis in perpurum are GAS also known as Streptococcus pyogenes, E. coli, Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus pneumoniae and MRSA, Clostridium uh, septicum and some other species. What are the likely causes of sepsis outside the genital tract and how might they may be identified? A general history and examination should be carried out to try to identify the source of sepsis. Women should be assessed clinically and if unwell or with dehydration or vomiting, admission should be considered. Mastitis. Mastitis is easily overlooked clinically but may lead to breast sepsis, necrotizing fasciitis and toxic shock syndrome. Urinary tract infection is caused by gram-negative bacterial infections which are particularly associated with UTI and acute pyonephritis should be treated aggressively. Although not all women may warrant hospital admissions, those with a sign of the sepsis uh, or those who are unable to remain hydrated and those who are vomiting should be admitted. Pneumonia. Severe pneumonia should be managed in consultation with respiratory physician and a medical microbiologist. A beta lactam antibiotic together with a macrolid antibiotic is used to cover the typical and atypical organisms. Skin and soft tissue infection. Any woman with suspected bacterial sepsis should be carefully examined for the skin and soft tissue infection, particularly looking at intravenous cannula or injection sites and cesarean or episiotomy wounds. Swabs should be taken for any sort of discharge. Gastroenteritis. Salmonella and Campylobacter rarely causes severe systemic infection and should be managed systematically unless features of bacteremia are present. Diarrhea and vomiting may be a feature of toxic shock syndrome together with the features of profound sepsis. Clostridium difficile is rare but increasingly found in obstetric patients. Pharyngitis. Most uh, cases of pharyngitis are viral, but approximately 10% of the cases in adults are attributed to group A streptococci. If three of the four uh, centered criteria, which include fever, tonsillar, exudate, low cough, tender, anterior cervical lymphadenopathy, are present, treatment with antibiotic is appropriate. Infection related to the regional anesthesia. Spinal abscess is very rare complication after a regional anesthesia and obstetric patient. The usual organism responsible is Steph aureus and Streptococci, gram negative rod, and sterile specimens accounting for 15% each. It is vital to consider the diagnosis, investigate, and treat in timely manner as permanent spinal cord or cardiochoina damage may result if neural compression is prolonged. Now, what should prompt the recognition of sepsis in periperum? All health professionals should be aware of the symptoms and signs of the maternal sepsis and clinical illness and of rapid potentially lethal course of severe sepsis and septic shock. Suspicion of the significant sepsis should trigger urgent referral to the secondary care. Clinical signs suggestive of the sepsis include uh, these things like first of all pyrexia, hypothermia, tachycardia, tachypnea, hypoxia, hypotension, oliguria, impaired consciousness and failure to respond to treatment. These signs including pyrexia may not always be present and are not necessarily related to the severity of the sepsis. Mastitis must never be overlooked, abdominal pain, fever greater than 38 degrees centigrade and tachycardia that is greater than 90 beats per minute in perpurium are indications for intravenous antibiotics.
and SAIDs should be avoided for the pain relief in cases of the sepsis as they impede the ability of polymorphs to fight the group A streptococcal infection. What are the common symptoms of sepsis in Purpurum? Those include fever and rigors, diarrhea and vomiting that indicate the exotoxin production breast engorgement and tenderness rash that is generalized maculopapular rash abdominal or pelvic pain and tenderness wound infection spreading cellulitis and distort offensive vaginal distort productive cough urinary symptom delay in uh, uterine involution and heavy lochia general um, symptoms include um, the lethargy and reduced appetite now what is the optimum way to monitor women with suspected sepsis in the purpurum monitoring of the woman with suspected severe sepsis or established uh, established sepsis should be multidisciplinary but preferably under the leadership of a single consultant a senior obstetrician should be involved in consultation with an intensivist microbiologist or infectious disease in physician Regular observation of all vitals, um, including the temperature, pulse, blood pressure, respiratory rate, should be recorded on modified early warning score MUSE chart. Now, what infectious disease history or information should be noted? Any recent illness or exposure to the illness in close contact, particularly streptococcal infection, should be noted. What are the appropriate triggers or features of sepsis in the purpurum that should prompt hospital admission? Community carers should be aware of the importance of early hospital referral of the recently delivered women who feel unwell and have pyrexia and should be aware of the possibility of the sepsis in purpurum. If sepsis is suspected in community, urgent referral to the hospital is indicated. What are the appropriate triggers for involvement of other specialities? All the cases of the sepsis in papyrus should be discussed with a clinical microbiologist or infectious disease physician. An appropriate specimen should be sent for the urgent examination. Antimicrobials should be started within one hour of the recognition of the severe sepsis. Women with a previously documented carriage of or infection with the multi-resistant organisms like uh, ESBL producing organisms, MRSA group A streptococcus or PVL producing staphylococci should prompt notification of the infection uh, control team suspicion of necrotizing fasciitis should prompt the involvement of intensive care physician and refer for the surgical opinion ideally from the plastic and reconstructive surgeons if available now what are the appropriate triggers for the involvement of other specialities those include microbiologist or infectious disease physician appropriate specimens antimicrobials notifications necrotizing fasciitis so that was the summary of this slide. Now, what investigations should be performed? First of all, blood cultures that are the key investigation and should be obtained prior to antibiotic administration. However, antibiotic treatment should be started without waiting for microbiology results. Secondly, serum lactate should be measured within six hours of the suspicion of the severe sepsis to guide the management. Serum lactate of more than four millimole per liter is indicative of tissue hypoperfusion. Any relevant imaging studies should be performed promptly in an attempt to confirm the source of infection, and this. Could include the chest x-ray the pelvic ultrasound scan or computerized tomography scan if pelvic abscess is suspected other samples taken should be guided by the clinical suspicion of the focus of infection as appropriate the routine blood test include the full blood count urea electrolytes crp any woman with the uh, symptoms of the tonsillitis and uh, pharyngitis should have throat swab sent for the culture. If MRSA status of the woman is unknown, um, no swab may be sent for the rapid MRSA screening where testing is available. Now, this slide is about tasks to be performed within the first six hours of identification of the severe sepsis modified from the surviving sepsis campaign resuscitation bundle. And that include first of all, obtain blood culture prior to antibiotic administration, administer broad spectrum antibiotic within one hour of recognition of the severe sepsis, measure serum lactate, and in the event of the hypertension and or serum lactate greater than 4 millimole per liter, deliver an initial minimum 20 ml per kg of the crystallite or an equivalent apply the vasopressor for the hypertension not responding to initial fluid resuscitation to maintain the mean arterial pressure above 65 millimeter mercury and in an event of a persistent hypertension despite fluid resuscitation that is septic shock and or the serum lactate greater than 4 millimole per liter 
achieve a central venous pressure of more than 8 mm of mercury and achieve a central uh, venous oxygenation saturation of more than 70% or mixed venous oxygen saturation of more than 65%. Now, how should um, sepsis in purpurum be managed? The focus of infection should be sought and dealt with. And this may be by uterine evacuation or by drainage of the abscess or the wound or the pelvic abscess. Secondly, the broad spectrum antibiotic should be given to cover the procedures. And um, uh, we have to use the different sort of antibiotics depending upon the cultural results and depending upon the type of infection. But the combination of either papericillin, tazobactam or uh, clindamycin provide uh, one of the broadest ranges of the treatment for the severe infection. We can also use um, vancomycin and tecoplanin for MRSA. So this table is about antimicrobial choices and limitation of the uh, antimicrobials like first of all comoxiclave uh, but it doesn't cover the MRSA, pseudomonas or ESBL producing organism. Next is metronidazole which only covers the anaerobes. Clindamycin covers most of the streptococci, staphylococci including MRSA and switches off exotoxin production with significantly decreased mortality and not really excreted or nephrotoxic. Next is Peperacillin or Tazobactam or, or Carbapenum that covers most of the organism except MRSA and our renal sparing in contrast to aminoglycoside. Peperacillin Tazobactam covers, doesn't cover ESPL producers. Next is that of the Gentamycin in the dose of 3 to 5 ml per kg that poses no problem in the normal renal function but if the doses are to be given regularly, serum levels must be monitored. Now, what are the some of the adverse effects of the uh, treatment? The treatment with any um, antimicrobials can cause the allergic reactions, including the skin rash. However, it should be remembered that particularly in the toxic shock, uh, macupapular or blanching erythemia may be exotoxin related and not uh, an allergy to the therapy. What is the role of intravenous immunoglobulin? Intravenous immunoglobulin is recommended for the severe invasive streptococcal or staphylococcal uh, infection if other therapies have failed. Where should women with a sepsis be cared for? Women with a sepsis in purpurum are best managed in the hospital where diagnostic services are easy to access and intensive care facilities are readily available. Early referral to the hospital may be life-saving. Now, what are the indications for admission to ICU? The presence of the shock or other organ dysfunction in women is an indication for admission to the ICU. So, the indications for admission of the woman to the ICU uh, include, first of all, the cardiovascular system indications, which include hypertension or ra raised serum lactate, persistent despite fluid resuscitation, suggesting the need for inotropic support. Second is that the respiratory indications, which include pulmonary edema, mechanical ventilation, airway production. Third is renal and the indication include renal dialysis neurological indications include significantly decreased conscious level miscellaneous indications include multi-organ failure uncorrected acidosis and hypothermia how should drug misusing women be managed drugs with uh, women with a history of the substance misuse are usually monitored until the multi-agency care and the local drug advisory specialist team and existing hospital guideline for the care of the substance misuse should be consulted and any injection site lesion should be swapped and an mrsa screen performed now what are the infection control issues the woman should be isolated in single room uh, with the facilities to reduce the risk of transmission of the infection and healthcare of workers including the doctors, midwives, the nurses, anesthetists and members of the wound care team should wear the personal protective equipments including the disposable gloves and apron when in contact with a woman uh, with the sepsis and equipments and their immediate surroundings should be sterilized as well. Now, what are the neonatal issues if uh, sepsis develops in the perpetuum? The baby is especially at the risk of the streptococcal and staphylococcal infection during the birth and during breastfeeding. The umbilical area should be examined and pediatrician consulted in an event of the sepsis uh, in perpetuum. If either mother or baby is infected with a group A streptococci, antibiotic should be administered. Now, what are the indications for the prophylaxis to the family or staff? Close uh, household contact should be warned about the symptoms of group A streptococcus and told to seek the medical attention and should symptom develop. Asymptomatic contact may warrant prophylaxis. Local and national guidelines should be followed in consultation with the local health production unit.
Now, can sepsis in perpetuum be prevented or detected earlier? All the pregnant and recently delivered women should be informed of the signs and symptoms of the genital tract infection and how to prevent its transmission. Any group A streptococcal infection identified during pregnancy should be treated aggressively. Now, this table is about staphylococcal toxic shock syndrome, which include the fever of more than 39.9 degrees centigrade, rash, which include diffuse macular, uh, macular erythroedema, desquamation 10 to 14 days after the onset of the illness, especially palms and soles, hypertension, in which systolic pressure is, uh, blood pressure is less than 90 millimeter of mercury, and multi-system involvement. Three of the following systems are affected, that is the gastrointestinal, macular, muscular, mucous membrane, the renal, hepatic, hematological and central nervous system. Now this table shows the streptococcal toxic shock syndrome which include um, A, the isolation of the beta hemolytic group A streptococcus from normally uh, sterile, sterile site like the blood CSF, peritoneal fluid and tissue biopsy, non-sterile site like the throat, vagina and, and the sputum. The clinical case definitions include multi-organ involvement characterized by hypertension plus um, two of these criteria like renal impairment, coagulopathy, liver involvement, acute respiratory disease syndrome, generalized erythematous um, macular rash and soft tissue necrosis. Now, this table is also very important, which uh, shows the antibiotic spectra for the Ocean gynae. And uh, you can see that anaerobes like Clostridia bacteriides and Peptostreptococci are covered by these antibiotics like uh, ampicillin, comoxiclave, clindamycin, verithromycin, and metronidazole. And you can also see the antibiotics which can cover MRSA and gram positive bacteria, group A streptococcal infections, the gram negative like. Coliform uh, and the pseudogonos. So, thank you so much. That was all about the bacterial sepsis following pregnancy. Subscribe on Obs and Gani. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz.